Hello there. This video is going to be about beards and as you can see my beard is getting rather long now. It's about time that I usually shave it. Um, my beard is pretty much just a product of laziness. I don't really have any need to shave at all really. I spend most of my time at home with my wife who happens to quite like beards and even little Jessica, my little daughter, is now starting to quite enjoy scratching my beard. So there's no reason not to have it and I tend to just let it grow to about this length and then I'll shave it and start all over again. So why am I talking about beards? Well, um, if you're a Jehovah's Witness, you'll know that there's a rather odd rule to do with brothers having beards. Um, basically, if you're an elder, you're allowed to have a beard, but you shouldn't expect any special privileges when it comes to giving talks, especially on assemblies or conventions. I was actually in a congregation once where one of the elders had a beard and he was um, quite uh, well used in the congregation. He had a number of privileges, one of which was the Theocratic Ministry School. And I heard as a ministerial servant that my body of elders received a letter from a neighbouring congregation where this brother had gone to give a talk, essentially complaining that an elder had turned up with a beard to give a public talk and saying, don't send this brother to us again if he has a beard. So it is. it does actually uh, come up, not just in casual conversation between witnesses about this crazy rule on beards, but it even is the cause of letters between congregations. <laughs> if uh, if a brother is found to be in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong facial hair. So I just thought it'd be interesting to explore very briefly what the reasons are for having for the prohibition on beards. Because after all, Jesus supposedly had a beard. Charles Taze Russell, the founder of um, the Bible students who became Jehovah's Witnesses, he had a beard. Most Bible characters who are male are known to have had beards. So it's a very, very bizarre, strange edict for a religion that claims to be Christian to enforce. Now, when I was uh, being raised as a witness, if ever I asked about the beard issue, I was told that it had to do with hippies. And this is borne out by a quote from the um, Watchtower 1968, May the 12th, page 288. Bear in mind this is the late 60s when this was written. In recent years, in many lands, a beard or long hair on a man attracts immediate notice and may, in the minds of the majority, classify such person undesirably with extremists or as rebels against society. God's ministers want to avoid making any impression that would take attention away from their ministry or hinder anyone from listening to the truth. They know that people are watching true Christians very critically and that to a great extent they judge the entire congregation and the good news by the minister's appearance as a representative of the congregation. So this explanation, not a single scripture obviously to support it, it's just, well, we want to think about our appearance. How does, how does our appearance look to others? When I was told this about hippies and, you know, the connotations of having a beard, another thing that you would hear said was, well, when have you ever seen a, a businessman with a beard? And again, I can think of quite a few, actually. I can think of uh, Richard Branson, well-known British entrepreneur, uh, Lord Alan Sugar, uh, and another one called James Kahn, he's an entrepreneur. Jimmy Swales, the founder of Wikipedia, he's an entrepreneur and he has a beard. It can't be said that you're not to be taken seriously if you are wearing a beard. So, whichever way you look at it, it seems to me that the beard rule is very, very strange indeed. There doesn't seem to be, well, there can't be a scripture against it for obvious reasons. Um, there doesn't seem to be any reason for such a far-reaching and heavily enforced rule among Jehovah's Witnesses until 
you read a certain book. There's a book called 30 Years a Watchtower Slave which recounts one man's experiences from the organisation a long, long time ago. You know, the 1920s and 30s were talking many, many decades ago. And it recounts an experience from 1925 from when Joseph Rutherford visited the German branch. And this seems to me to be a far more plausible reason why there is a ban on beards. And I'll, let me read it to you. It says, an amusing incident took place at the time of the judge's visit. The director of our German branch, as had many before him, had grown a large beard patterned after Charles Taze Russell's beard. The judge did not want anything at all to remain which might remind him of Russell not even the cultivation of a beard. So sitting at the table for dinner one night within my earshot, the director asked the judge for one more large rotary press. The judge said nothing for a while, merely ate. Then suddenly he looked up, his eyes pinned severely on the director's huge beard and said, I will buy you the press if you take that thing off, pointing to the beard. It surely shocked the director's sensibilities, but he meekly heeded the warning and soon shamefacedly appeared minus his beard. Of course, the judge had given him an out, so the director proudly accompanied the loss of the beard with, I preferred the rotary press so that I might advance the kingdom. Now this experience to me, and I thank uh, a friend of mine in Belgium, a uh, mutual friend of myself and Patrick Hayek who appeared on a recent video for drawing this to my attention. This seems like a far more plausible reason why Watchtower has its fixation about beards. Because let's face it, the prohibition on beards has no scriptural or logical justification to it unless you consider that it might be a legacy of a time in the organisation's past when Joseph Rutherford, who came to power in quite a bit of controversy, basically ousted directors who didn't agree with him, tore up Charles Taze Russell's will, um, avoided a scenario where there might be something much closer to a governing body as far back as 1917, and insisted on being the sole president, the sole decision maker in the organisation. If you don't know what I'm talking about, by the way, please research Joseph Rutherford's takeover of the organisation. But it, it strikes me as perfectly plausible that he would want to erase any memory of Charles Taze Russell, whose wishes he completely uh, railroaded over when he became president. And the beard strike the, the prohibition on the beard seems like a perfectly well I wouldn't say it's understandable <laughs> the very little that Rutherford did in my book is understandable but it's there's at least an explanation there we are minus beards or Jehovah's Witnesses are minus beards because of a fixation that was inherited from Joseph Rutherford so I hope that information has been uh, useful for you um, if you are a Jehovah's Witness watching this video, I'm sure, regardless of what you say publicly, I'm sure you are just as baffled as any other witness by the beard, beard prohibition. And hopefully you've learned something from this video that it's not all to do with hippies and um, having a carefully crafted business image. It's more likely to do with some crazy fixation of Joseph Rutherford. So, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.